I'm Steve Akers. I uh, am a Met computer science graduate from 1994. And I went on from there and worked in the Boston technology community for years and was given the opportunity to co-found my first startup in the uh, early 2000 period. And then went on from that to found three other companies. And I always stayed in connection with Met because I gained a lot from the experience of being able to have access to a major research university and all the academic benefits of that while I worked. All the things I've ever worked on had something to do with networking and cryptography. So I was naturally interested in blockchain, but there are so many misconceptions about it. So when I was talking to Dean Tanya at the Met College about my latest company and how I was using, using blockchain, she said, would you come to a lecture for me? Uh, because I agree with you, there's a lot of misconception around it. But she said, if you would, you would do this and kind of give the perspective of industry and how blockchain could fit into industry, perhaps we could look at what you do. It would be interesting to our students and we could uh, benefit from one of the faculty looking at what you did and maybe building a series of courses on top of it. What I intended to do is speak to everyone, you know, all the constituencies that met and, and BU if, if, you know, if others outside of MET want to watch the, the lectures as well. So I, I wanted to give everyone a broad conceptual understanding so they could think about ways it relates to their particular discipline. In the lectures, particularly lecture one, I explained how you know, one has an address and it's not tied to their name, it's tied to some number that comes out of you know, a long cryptographic hash. That's what makes it pseudonymous. You, one cannot tell exactly who's transacting on the network. There are ways to pin those down to criminals, but a criminal justice professor may want to go dig into that or collaborate with one of the, the computer science faculty to figure out how to do that. You just get discussions going across the various disciplines at BU. I think one of the misconceptions is that it is only for altcoins and payments and things of that nature, and it can be used for recording other things. Someone who's interested in governance, for example, right, can look into blockchain and realize that they can write down things that, about transactions they entered into. So for example, if you sell your house, all the documents that go into supporting the sale of your house, instead of just recording them at the Registry of Deeds, they can be recorded in a certain fashion on the blockchain, right? So that's a use that transcends you know, currency and, and payments and it's not all that nerdy. And probably the biggest thing there is making this easy enough to use so that normal people can say, oh, you know, I have these PDFs of all the documents around my home sale. I want to record those immutably on a, on a ledger so I can tell no one's tampered with them and therefore no one can uh, steal the deed to my house, basically. It kind of reminds me of the early internet when people could fool around with it, then it became business, and I think that's where it's heading. You know, within five years, I think blockchain will be embedded in the systems of commerce we use, and it, it will be maintained by larger companies and well-capitalized institutions. Data and humanity can intersect, and often does. You know? What I would say to students is to take advantage of everything that's afforded you at a major research university at BU. If you go to MET, another added value is you get a BU degree, right, which is known all over the world. I've done business internationally a lot, and when they, and any other country, they know where you went to school, they know everything about you before you ever walk into a meeting. And, oh, you went to Boston University. Oh, that's impressive. And you get that whether you go to MET or the day school, so there's a lot of value to that. But what I'd like students to take away from this particular blockchain lecture is something can be built organically that is decentralized, doesn't re rely on a government, and can enforce rules and provide integrity to data. And that defining something like that and pulling in all the knowledge you're gonna get from multiple disciplines will improve society. It really can improve society.